Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Today I wanted to look at the item system for characters, going to some more focused detail really about the FPS side of things when we talk about items 2.0 and what we can expect from weapons, clothing and armour in the next major patch for Star Citizen. Star Citizen is going to have a lot of customization for your gear and equipment, all of which is super highly detailed. Fidelity, fidelity, fidelity. Clothing, equipment and armour is layered. Each um, equip a shirt or shoes and then a jacket over it and you'll be able to see all of the items as they're meant to look. They use a culling technique um, to remove rendering layers that can't be seen or aren't appropriate to be seen and to prevent clipping uh, and for optimization and that sort of stuff. But you're never going to see uh, a jacket being put on over a t-shirt and that t-shirt disappear or like now this jacket has taken over so we should see your bare chest or something like that. All weapons, armor and equipment in-game have a manufacturer as well and a style guide that artists use to give the item a sense of brand and provenance in a very similar if not almost identical way they have the ship guides and the ship pipeline and the ship style guides you're going to know at a glance what a castac arms weapon looks like you know as well that the first and third person animations are unified so you'll be able to see what a teammate or enemy is pointing at projectiles are produced from the barrel of your gun so if you have recoil or are moving then at, shots are accurately reflected by this by going all over the place. They're generated from your gun, where your gun is at the time when you pull the trigger. What you see is what you get with your equipment too. All of your armor, weapons and equipment, and even ammo that is not hidden by like a bag or a piece of cloth or something is accurately modeled. And you won't be able to hold items larger than your pockets in your pocket either. So you're not going to have to pull a rifle out of your pocket like you can in some games. So item system 2.0, or items 2.0, uh, in regards to first person shooter stuff. Every item in the game can be unique because of item system 2.0. It has its own set of stats and can interact with other items efficiently and communicate with them if necessary. The system that we have for ship loadouts and arena commander is basically the same system that we're going to have for character equipment and loadout customizations. So characters have item ports, uh, leg armor and leg clothing for example will only fit on your legs. Uh, these items in turn might have their own ports so equipping certain leg armor and chest armor will give you ports for holsters, grenades or other equipment uh, and that sort of jazz. NPCs you encounter will use a similar system to procedurally generate loadouts and equipment too um, so it's all within a set range. There are going to be a huge range of armor, clothing, and specialist suits to choose from as well. A light, medium, and heavy armors from a variety of manufacturers, some of which look awesome. The Outlaw Heavy Armor is probably the best armor I've ever seen, but there's some great looking um, armor for the UEE stuff and, and from various manufacturers. There's also going to be flight suits, hazard protection gear, explorer suits, to, um, kind of geared towards discovery, um, but not just this. You're going to be able to buy a heavy suit of armor, and this is all going to be modular. So you can have your Frankenstein heavy legs with a light helmet um, and other Frankenstein armor in between. There will be limitations in some areas, though. Um, you might not be able to wear certain EVA packs with certain armor, and um, certain equipment might be um, have redundancies or um, need certain other bits to, to actually work. But you'll need a helmet oxygen and EVA pack, for example, to move around outside your ship safely in space. Civilian clothing. Civilian clothing um, is going to be, in general, more aesthetic. I say that combat is still definitely going to occur when you're in your civvies, and I suspect some missions will be carried out entirely in civilian clothing. We're also going to see some items, um, at least the current plan, is restricted by gender, um, because the female model is different to the male model uh, and they want everything to look great so uh, at least in the first iterations uh, some stuff will be restricted by gender for the civilian clothing. Weapons and equipment so this is mainly what I actually wanted to talk about here. Weapons in Star Citizen are going to be pretty modular. You're going to be able to change ammo types, scopes, grips and have a lot of customization on their functionality for your playstyle. Again in its first implementation it's going to be like editing a ship like we currently have. The weapon will have specific ports that allow certain items to fit there, like the modern rail systems uh, on real guns. You're going to have a lot of different scopes and lights and that sort of stuff to put on your gun uh, and to mess around with its functionality. In the very 
very near future, we should see the double-barreled shotgun from Castec Arms, um, as well as some more Klaus and Werner weapons, the Gemini ballistic rifle, lots and lots of weapons coming online, uh, as well as continued improvements to the current balance uh, uh, of current weapons uh, and gear. Um, grenades and utility items. We're going to start to see a variety of items that we're going to have to make choices with what to equip with in Star Citizen, but also in the Persistent Universe. There's going to be selections of um, grenades from EMP, Incendiary, Radar Jammer, HE, Frag, but also, and um, obviously Frag we already have, but also various utility items that might take similar slots up, or we can only equip a, a limited amount of. These can be portable shields, claymores, holograms, and much, much more. You're going to have to think about what you want to equip, and especially in a team, coordinate your equipment with each other. In the Persistent Universe, you're going to need to fit your equipment in your ship uh, as well. So just remember that any certain ships are going to be able to uh, allow you to wear heavy armour in the cockpit. For example, you might not be able to wear armour at all in some ships, so you're going to have to store that somewhere. With the weapons and equipment, we should see a large amount of work uh, on them each month, even after the game's release quite possibly. Uh, it's something that they have a developed pipeline for. For me, uh, more variety and more items of this type help enrich gameplay as long as they're balanced. Um, so just bear that in mind that you obviously want balance, you don't want a blizzard kind of, let's make everything better every time, um, in regards to um, stuff that needs to be nerfed or overpowered and that sort of jazz. Loadouts and radar. Your loadout's weight's going to affect your speed and stamina. You won't be able to run forever. Lighter loadouts will give you mobility, and might be hard to detect on radars. They are doing um, constant work on radars and scanning for the FPS side of things, and there's lots of iterations um, as we're going forward with the game, so expect to see more with radars, expect to see different type of loadouts for different situations, even in Star Marine, and start, we're going to start to see a lot more rich, in-depth gameplay, especially with the next major release of Star Citizen, whether that's a 2.7 or if they go straight to 3.0, we're not entirely sure. Well, I'm not entirely sure anyway. One of the other things that we're going to get is an expanded shopping system, um, or shopping experience at least, to purchase items in-game with Rec or Alpha UEC. Some items will only be available in certain areas of the Persistent Universe, hopefully encouraging players to move around and interact more. In Star Marine, hopefully it will give us a way to use our Rec. Now, all of this will be obtainable in-game at that stage. You won't have to buy anything if you don't want to. You can literally jump into the game, earn Alpha UEC by doing missions, earn Rec by playing um, in Arena Commander or Star Marine, uh, and then use that to purchase those items. The FPS side of Star Citizen and Star Marine is extremely pretty. And as more um, kind of systems come online to improve animations, networking, optimization, and give us more choice for weapons and items that make... Uh, especially Star Marine, an interesting and competitive game, it makes me somewhat hyped for the future. This video was really an excuse to show off some of the cool FPS weapons and equipment more than anything else that I'd seen in a few ATVs over the last few months. Remember, commenting on any of our Star Citizen videos each month gives you a chance to win a ship. For March, it's an Avenger Titan. Uh, so tell me what you think of the idea of spending wreck in Star Marine to rent equipment. Or do you think that we should have everything by default uh, available to us and wreck should just be for aesthetic items? Uh, do you think that Star Marine could become a competitive standalone game? Or just is it going to always be a practice for the Persistent Universe? And do you like the idea of lots of weapons and items being produced for the game? Um, even after release or whatever, uh, or would you like to see a more limited set? That's the sort of stuff you expect and them to concentrate more on other areas. Please remember to like and subscribe as it really does help me and I will see you in the verse.